Um, it's absolutely great to be at, at this conference. Thank you very much for, for being invited to, to speak. Um, so we're in a REF session. What I might have to say, uh, might have to say a little bit something different about REF that you might not be expecting, especially coming from an impact officer. Um, so, but I hope you can bear with me for the next 20 minutes. Um, what I'm following on from is the conversations that were started yesterday um, in the, the morning panel session um, by King's College. Um, and there was a lot of discussion about university um, special collections and, and archives and how they can fit into the REF agenda. Um, so I hope I'm going to explore that for you and, and have some discussion around that. Um, so the way I see um, university special collections and archives, and by this I mean from the museums all the way through to uh, a teaching collection, um, is there's a pull um, that these collections have. There are requirements um, that I've discussed with our archivists and curators at the University of Reading. On the one hand, there's the public engagement side. There's getting people from outside to come in and interact with the collection, interact with the museum. And then inward looking, there's the research engagement with researchers within the university. And so there's this pull that these collections have that, that I think are, are quite special to um, a university collection. So there is a valuation before the REF. It did happen, and it's been happening for a long time within um, the collections. Um, the evaluation has to go to a number of different areas. So the first one is to go to the university itself to justify why the university has a special collection. Um, most universities were built around their special collections, um, but now it's, it's the reverse. It's the what place do they still have um, within the university as the university system is changing so dramatically. Um, so there's things like the visitor data reports and, and such that have been occurring for quite a long time. Then there's also the funders. Um, I'm a fo I apologise, it's that inspiring learning for all. Um, this, this has been um, a system of evaluation in place for quite some time um, with Arts Council for England. So again, these are um, evaluation systems that have been in place for a long time. And then HLF funding, for example, as well, um, that involves the evaluation reports. And if you're doing a very long project, then it is all about how to continue the funding um, as well as doing your final evaluation report. So before REF 2014, there were lots of things in place that everybody was already doing. The evaluation was already there just for different purposes. So along comes REF. And 2014, um, it changed a lot of things. It changed the landscape. It changed the, the languages, the, the language that was used within a university about evaluation. And suddenly, um, everyone started thinking differently about what impact is and what evaluation is. And it was very unfamiliar to some, but having spoken to quite a few people, it was quite familiar within um, the, the cur with curators and with, with archivists. So. It came as a bit of a surprise to many researchers, but it wasn't much of a surprise to archivists and curators who were quite familiar with the whole system already. So the result were, as we discussed yesterday, the over 6,000 um, REF impact case studies. Um, for anybody who wants to have a look at them, they are still available um, online. I have done a very, very brief study of, of how it worked for the archives and museums. Um, please do look at the King's report. It's much more detailed than the one I'm going to share, but I'm hoping that this simplified version will help to make my point. Um, so I did a very, very quick look, and of all of the impact case studies, about 600 refer to archives any kind of archive, just the word archive features in the impact case study. And with museums, just over 800 features the word museum. However, the devil is in the detail with the archive and museum. What does that actually mean? Who, who were these um, museums and archives and how did they fit in with this impact case study? Are they just seen as a resource or are they just seen as a partner? And one of the things with um, the King's report and also with the NCCPE report that was done a couple of years ago on museums in the REF um, case studies, it's a lot more about being a resource rather than as a partner. 
And then when we break it down even further to look at the university collections, um, whether archives or museums, very, very few of these impact case studies actually feature a university collection at all. 18 case studies mention a university museum. There are more than 18 university museums in existence. So there is a huge gap um, that we have here when it comes to REF. And there's a lot of discussion that have been had over the last couple of days about why this is the case, why it is that researchers within universities don't look on their own front door to, to work with museums and archives. So what I'm going to try and do is find an answer hopefully, of how we can start changing the pattern because the in-house knowledge and the best practice that is held by archivists and curators within universities is absolute gold dust. It's wonderful um, information that can be shared with researchers. So very briefly, my donuts are nothing like the, the beautiful graphs that um, we saw yesterday, but my donuts are hopefully will explain a little bit about what um, happened with, with REF and, and impact. Um, main panel D um, is in green here. Um, this is where all of the, um, the impact case studies for archives and museums mainly feature. Um, for main panel C, that's where um, archaeology sits. So that's why that's also quite big, because archaeologists really like working with museums and, and archives as well. And so then breaking it down, you can see very clearly where the, the key um, subjects are in panel D. Um, history, English language and literature, and art and design work with the museums and, and archives. And that's where those impact case studies all sit. There are missed opportunities quite clearly with other subjects. And this is something that the NCCP have also identified, is that a lot of disciplines just aren't working with archives and museums in general, never mind the university ones. So then the type of impact is very, very clearly cultural, and it is also societal. And that's where the impact takes place. Um, and considering the discussions this morning about digitization and all of the innovations that are going on at the moment, um, the technological impact that was reported in 2014 was really small. And considering digital projects that were going on at the time before 2014, again, there seems to be another wasted opportunity to look at the technological impact um, that research can have, um, especially when it comes to working with archives and museums, because that's where digital innovations are taking place. Another feature that um, is very apparent is how inward-looking um, the, the impact is when it comes to um, archives and museums. 68% um, of the impact is UK-based, um, so that is very inwardly focused just in the UK, but then within the UK, breaking it down, England dominates. And England dominates because London dominates, and that's where everybody is, is working with. They're all working with the big national um, archives and things, which is absolutely fine. Everybody wants to work with big partners, but again, it's missing opportunities um, to, to work with, with your local museums um, and archives and collections, and also missing the opportunity to work with your own institutions. Um, so that's the sort of the, the landscape that, that we had um, in 2014 that was reported. So since 2014, what's been happening um, within an institution? The main thing to appreciate is the huge increase in the researcher interest in impact. Um, I think this is something that we've all been discussing over the last um, couple of days, is that more researchers are looking for more impact, um, however they're driven by their own passion or by their um, division, their management, saying we've got to have more impact. So there's increased demand there. There's increased interest in researcher interest in archives and collections. What is one of the problems is this is still interest in the larger archives and it is still in the larger institutions. And there is a real potential um, opportunity there for these researchers to come and talk to um, their, their collections within their own institution because that's where the best practice lies, that's where information lies, that's where um, somewhere that a researcher can look in their own, their own front door. Um, and the researchers are looking to increase their skills development, 
and they're looking for public engagement, um, they're looking at the archival museum skills, and they're also looking for evaluation. So there should be an increase in the demand for in-house um, knowledge um, in the archives with the knowledge exchange and all the practice. That is my dream, that is my vision, that they will see it in-house. And I know there's some, there are some faces looking at me going, that's a lovely idea, but that's not going to happen. And this is something that I know is, is going to raise a lot of people saying, but it's just not happening at the moment. But I think that this is something that can happen and should happen. And I'd like to give some examples that we have at the University of Reading to show that it is possible, it can happen. It does take a lot of hard work, and it's one project at a time. So please don't despair and look at me as if to say, this isn't going to happen. I think it can happen. And I hope I can explain some ways that it can happen. The other thing that, that I'm keen to emphasize is that impact is not just about the ref. Impact is much bigger than that. It's much more important than that. Ref is just one way of reporting. And I don't like the idea of university archives feeling like they are being shut out because of the ref. They should be included because they have a lot of experience to bring to researchers who are aiming to have impact for the REF. So I'll give one example. Um, the Ewer Museum at the University of Reading, um, for those of you who don't know it, this is our collection um, for um, classical um, archaeology and uh, art, and it's a beautiful museum, and it does fantastic work for outreach um, and engagement. Um, the schools absolutely love it. It even featured on Teacup Travels, for those of you who, um, who know Teacup Travels, very exciting. And, and of course, they were considered for a ref impact case study in 2014 and used the database that they have that is um, publicly available and it's a wonderful database. However, disappointingly for them, the impact case study did not achieve what they expected it to achieve in ref because the research was not convincing enough to support the wonderful impact that they were reporting. <coughs> And so they've had to sit and rethink about how they can change the way they look at how they report the impact that is taking place. So we've been working together over the last year to look at the projects that the year is working with that are within classics. There's very strong research behind it, and they are very deeply embedded in supporting two impact projects. I'm not going to call them case studies. At the moment, they're projects and they're specialising in the outreach and public engagement that these projects are taking place. The researchers have sat with the curators and have said, we don't know how to do this. Please, can you help us? Please, can you share your best practice with us so that we can take this forward? And that's going to form the basis of this case study um, eventually in 2021. So that's one example of how the Year Museum is working. Another um, is the Museum of English Rural Life. Um, the Museum of English Rural Life has just gone through a major regeneration itself. Um, it's got, had HLF funding. And it's been starting to work much more closely with the researchers at Reading. Um, the main project that has happened since 2014 is Glastonbury Abbey that has been run by Roberta Gilchrist. And she is working with the museum curator at Glastonbury Abbey. But the museum creator, curator at Glastonbury Abbey said, I need to know how to do certain things. I need some best practice. And they got some follow-on funding to do a knowledge exchange program. And the knowledge exchange program was run by um, the Merle. It was run by the curators there who worked with the curators at Glastonbury Abbey's museum and built in this wonderful um, program for tactile collections and so that was that was how they built themselves in there and so following on from that project the success of that project the success of the engagement with the researcher with the curators has actually inspired a further project that we are hoping to get funding for um, I had a researcher who is a paleo-ethno-archaeologist, if I can get that right, um, who came to me with a funding application and he said, I want to do um, impact with a museum. And I said, well, that's a lovely idea, a museum in Bolivia. That's wonderful. Do you know what, anything about museums? Not really. I said, well, you better go and talk to everybody at the Merle. And so he went and spoke to, um, to Kate Arnold Foster um, at the Merle, and she has helped to embed um, the expertise and the best practice that they have. So we are now at a stage where we are looking at embedding um, the expertise that we have in our special collections and in our archives um, with 
um, research projects right at the very start. And I think this is the key, is trying to build in at the very beginning. Another example I have is Teresa Merjas, um, who is theatre. Um, that's her area of research. And she was brought in um, by Special Collections um, to work um, on um, their collections um, in a number of different ways. We have the Huntley and Palmer collection, and she has taken a different view of how um, that collection works, and she has worked incredibly closely with the archivist Guy Baxter there on how to do this. And she is deeply embedded in it. And she has also produced the War Child Archive. I urge you all to have a, have a look at this. It's a beautiful interpretation of an archive. Um, this is the evacuee collection that we have at, in special collections. And she worked with Guy Baxter to produce this beautiful website, um, which I thoroughly recommend you take a look at. So again, it's, it's this researcher is one fine example of how she, she has become embedded herself within the collection, but is also now sharing it with other researchers across the university. This is not to say that a collection itself can't have impact, and um, we are currently working with the typography collection that has a researcher embedded in it, um, and we have funding to do a couple of projects with it, and so the isotype collection is becoming a big feature of this project. And again, it's all about sharing the knowledge and best practice. And sometimes the impact itself is, is the actual collection. Um, we have the International Cocoa Quarantine Centre, and I'm very proud that we are preserving chocolate for the future. Uh, so if we're doing one thing at Reading, we are saving the chocolate. Um, and, and this collection was actually built um, on the research that took, started to take place at Reading in the 1970s and is still going on now, um, to the point that a collection was given um, to the university by um, the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew um, in 1985, and it has become a centre, and it is having an impact um, worldwide um, on cocoa. Um, so be very grateful that we are preserving the genetics of, of cocoa beans to fight against disease and all sorts of things. So there are all these different examples um, that we have um, within Reading that I think can show that you can start to work with the researchers. It does take time, but from success breeds success, one project will lead on to another, um, as we have, for, as example, with the Merle. So just some final thoughts. Um, everybody working in the archives, special collections, um, universities and, and otherwise, are experts in evaluating impact. It's been done for, for years before the REF, and it's just slightly changed now, now that the REF has come into place. This expertise can be shared. Um, you can have an impact on researchers, and then you can enable best practice in impact. And there is a huge demand from researchers, so there's an opportunity for them to look within their institution and, and find a way of doing that. The REF has raised the importance of impact, and that has raised an opportunity um, that can be grasped with both hands, I think, um, within an institution to help researchers um, build further impact by using the expertise in-house, but also by using the connections that the archives will have to the outside world. Of course, this does need a bit of help. This needs a little bit of, of jiggery-pokery coming from within the institution as well as without. We were talking yesterday about how small archives who don't have the impact at the moment, um, like the Society of Antiquaries um, archive, um, how they can have, have that reach. And there's always a broker that needs to be in place. There's always that expert um, help of, of putting these relationships together. Um, so university archives and special collections need individuals within an institution um, who understands the strengths and the needs of the, the collection and the archives and the specialists within it. They also need somebody who understands what the researchers are up to as well and to help put together and understand the needs and the strengths of those researchers, but also somebody who understands the full agenda as well. So it's, it's finding that person who can do that, whether it's a grants manager, whether it's an impact officer, there are lots of different ways of doing it. Um, it's very easy for me to say in 20 minutes, just go off and do it. And I know that there, is, there are more complications to it, but I think it's one way of, of possibly looking at it, is finding the champion who can help broker those relationships. So when it comes to, to impact, is there one way of, of looking at evaluation 
that will cover everything that a university um, special collection archive, a museum um, can achieve. And I think that is, it's already there. Um, impact is already in place. Um, when it comes to the REF, we just need to view it with a different lens. It's not about returning a case study um, to the REF, but it's about supporting those projects that will be returning case studies in the end. Thank you.